so i have more fabrics here that i got for this project i'm making my wardrobe this is crepe and this is black and brown of the same fabric although the textures are different um i wish i can show you but i'm going to show you when i start making this okay i don't want to bring them out of the nylon because who's going to fold it back <laughs> anyways um this is part of the fabric i'm going to be using for my wardrobe I have this too i can bring this one out because it actually did not fit into the nylon the nylon was too small so yeah this is a netty fabric a netty netty fabric that stretch okay so um can you comment on the comment section if you know what i'm going to use this to create or you can tell me what to use it to create okay you can just let me know what you think i should use this to create or if you already feel like you know what i can use this to create like you know what is already on my mind let me know in the comment section okay and let's see who is going to guess right but anyways that's not why we are here i just wanted to show you guys my fabric so we are on the part two of the sewing version welcome to my channel i got this comment on my youtube channel um from roots this certain lady called roots i think your first name is god bless god bless Ruth. god bless Ruth said on my comment section that and that she has not been able to create for the past two weeks that she has not been able to sew for the past two weeks now not in this order i'm going to put down the comments so you see how she actually typed it out but anyways it sounded like this and i'm here to say something quickly okay god bless Ruth. you're not the only one girl Ruth okay you are allowed to take a break okay you are allowed to take a breather from whatever you're doing you're allowed to actually take a break rest and just disconnect a little bit from what you're doing and then refuel yourself back and you'll get to the point where you're fully relaxed and come back to your passion or to your hobby or whatever it is you're doing your work okay you're allowed to rest i also have gone through this um point where i call it a dry spell where i feel lazy to create i am distant from fashion designing where i feel disinterested okay so you are not the only one i have been through it let me not say been through it because i still go through it and i cannot tell what the future is like but i know that somehow somehow it's going to still be in my future so girl just take a breather okay take a chill pill rest you can rest it is not nothing is wrong with you okay it is normal it is human nature okay once in a while we get bored our mind gets bored from doing the same thing over and over again and we shouldn't blame ourselves for that okay because yeah it's life it's normal it's generally everybody goes through it no matter what you're doing no matter what kind of work you're doing you get to a point where you just have like a dry spell you're just disinterested from everything it's normal nothing is wrong with you girl and yeah i want to share two things that i always do to bring myself out of those kind of mood okay please pardon me quickly in case you're going through this particular thing you can learn fast okay this is not just for roots okay so these are the two things that i do to bring myself out of that kind of mood number one is i always try to create a project for myself okay when i notice or i observe that i'm going through that dry spell where i feel disinterested from sewing i feel lazy i feel like okay i don't want to do this like i'm tired from it and i'm going like one month in where i've not created a sew what I do is create a project for myself. I just create a project and I make sure that I see that project through from the start to the finish. Let me give you an example. I don't know if you guys remember for the OGs on this channel. If you're watching me and you have been like an OG. Do you remember that period of time where I started doing requested video? Um, today is the 2nd of February. And today I have decided or oh, how would I put it? It just so happened that I started working on the requested videos today yes that was the period i was going through a dry spell i was disinterested in sewing i was dis disconnected from it because i was going through so much stress um i was sewing and i was using it to create content and the stress was too much and when youtube started paying me i realized that the money was not even worth it okay so that was like 
something that dismotivated me from sewing i don't know if that word is this but yeah it made me i just i wasn't motivated to sew anymore i was not interested i was just lazy and whenever i remember the stress i have to go through to sew you know whenever i remember the stress i have to go through to cut all those things i just said no 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 you know i just it killed the vibe okay so that period when i realized that it was happening i just started to come on my channel and i announced that okay can we just start doing requested videos you guys can send me outfits and i'm going to challenge myself and make it now doing that particular project creating that project for myself helped me it literally brought me out of that dark space or that it's not a dark space it's normal so it brought me out of that particular mood because now i started challenging myself into making things that i've not made before and doing that and you know becoming successful in doing it just brought out that you know that spark that love my passion came back fast because i started realizing that i have more in me than i was giving myself credit for okay so yeah creating a project for yourself will help okay you can create a project by saying take off some of the tops in your wardrobe and dash it out to your relative your sibling somebody give it out and then we sew it for yourself now going on that project where you sew new tops for yourself there is no way you would do one and two and three and you wear it and it fits you so well there is no way you not decide to go back into sewing fast like in fact in giving out your tops and you know wanting to go out one day and you realize you don't even have tops anymore because you've given it out it's going to make you want to sew something for yourself i don't know about it but for me i always just feel like oh no nah, no nah, nah, i can't be a tailor and be lacking i just start creating okay so try it try to create a project for yourself now as i'm talking to you you can decide to just you know take some of your skirts your favorite skirts yes give them out and remake it and in doing so you're going to come back okay and another thing i do the second thing i do is i always always make sure that my two phones i have this app called pinterest pinterest is an app that has everything that you ever want in it okay it has the fashion designing word it has the word of like decorating how to decorate your room toilet your kitchen your i don't know why i call toilet after room but yes your offices how to you know um, diys um how to know, know your plants quotes affirmations whatever it is you want to search on pinterest i don't know why my brain is going so low on things to search for but yeah whatever you want to search on pinterest you got it okay so pinterest is a place to get inspired from that's what i do i make sure i have pinterest on my two phones pinterest is, i make sure i have pinterest on my two phones and when i wake up in the morning and i say my prayer you know i have my tea the next thing i do is i go on pinterest and i start looking at outfits girl there is no way you will go on pinterest and you see a particular outfit on a very beautiful black lady that you will not want into your wardrobe okay you will want to have it when you see a beautiful sexy black melanin goddess wearing like one very beautiful two-piece and you know that you can make that two-piece for yourself no matter what kind of mood you are on once you see that on your pinterest app you're going to want to have it on your wardrobe and that is going to motivate you to want to sew okay so that is the second thing i always do and it works for me okay so i don't want to talk too much about it because this video is a different video i just wanted to let you guys know how to bring yourself out from that point or that space where you feel like you don't want to sew or you're disconnected from sewing try this and let me know what you think on the comment section now let's get to today's video welcome to the channel welcome i don't know what i'm shouting i'm excited for this part too okay now um on this part too we're going to be quickly doing um two things first of all i'm going to show you guys how to calculate the stretch on your fabric another method okay on the part one i showed you a method where you calculate the stretch on your fabric words i had to go on um google again to make research to know another way i'd like to know different method of things check my videos you'll see i have different method of different things i like to know different methods so i searched i saw a method another method i'm going to be showing you that particular method on the video okay this method is different from the method on the first or the part one sewing video so you do know that method but you don't know this method so you want to know okay so we're going to calculate the stretch on the fabric and also we're going to be adjusting the pattern to get the a line that we want to see on the dress okay so you can see that this a line here on this particular dress is actually different from the first dress we have sewn okay this first dress we have sewn is not an a line bodycon dress it's a dress um, a bodycon dress with the slits by the side but this particular dress here has no slits it just has like an a-line flowy thing at the base and also a deeper armhole and a different neckline so we're going to be doing those things on the pattern and then we're going to cut the pattern on the fabric and we're done 
girl i know my intro was very long but i like to engage you guys on my process if you want to understand my videos a lot just watch my intros and it will give you like highlights and hints of the things that are to come okay to make you understand the process we're about to get into and that is why i like to make my intros lengthy but anyways too much talk if you are seeing this channel for the first time please go ahead and subscribe i think you want to grow with me don't you think so go ahead and click on the subscribe button and please do not forget to like this video and while you are subscribing put on your notification bell so you don't miss out on my future uploads and you can help me share this video i really mwah, mwah, appreciate you for doing that in advance and without no further ado let's just get into the sewing version so please grab your pattern paper if you drafted out that main pattern that i'm using to create my three dresses grab your pattern paper because we're going to be adjusting the base okay and yeah to get that a line that i need on the base of my dress i am going to be taping my pattern paper to a new pattern paper okay so this is my new pattern paper i'm going to tape it by the side you can see on my pattern that i have almost everywhere labeled out you can see that the center front is not where i am taping my pattern paper to i am taping it to the side of my pattern okay to the side and i'm just going to tape and start adjusting and you can see how my um, pattern paper is placed and you can see where it is starting from so what we are practically adjusting is going to be from the hip down okay so from the shoulder to the waist we have no business doing anything there we're just adjusting from the hip down okay so what i'm doing now is extending my length to the new pattern paper because where we are adjusting is the length okay the round base is where we need that a line um fullness okay so that is why we are extending the length now on that length i am going to be marking 15 inches as my new round base and this 15 inches is going to create the a line i need on the base but if you want a fuller a line on your base on the base of your dress you can use 16 inches you can use 17 inches the more you use the more full your a-line will be okay so you can use any amount or measurement you need on your round base but i use 15 and i am marking this down in case you did not hear me well 15 inches is what i marked on my round base i am going to move up to the hip point and i will mark six inches down from the hip point okay so see me place my tape for my hip point on the side and i'm marking six inches down that six inches is what i'm going to connect to my round base and this will automatically create an a-line on the dress see how simple it was okay see the simple step i took and when i'm done creating the dress and i wear it you will actually see what it actually looks like like the result you will know that it is really simple for you to adjust any kind of pattern to get anything you want once you understand how to create the basic pattern you can readjust that basic pattern to any particular style you want okay so that is what is happening here i just successfully created my a-line on my pattern paper and you can see me adjusting any sharp edges okay so i'm using my marker to make sure that i don't get any too curvy edgy or any too sharp edgy okay so edges 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 <laughs> okay so you are always allowed to adjust i keep telling you this you are always allowed to adjust okay it is better for you to adjust on the pattern paper than go to court and <laughs> you are seeing something else or more do all the adjustment on your pattern before you cut and now i'm cutting out the part i don't need on the pattern i'm cutting out the excess that is not going to be part of the pattern again taking it off so i cannot place this on a fabric to cut and um in case you don't want your a line to start from that six inches down you want it to start from somewhere upper you can you know mark four inches down from your hip three inches down it is up to you okay but this is how my a line pattern looks and we're going to repeat the same step for the back pattern exactly what we did taping a new pattern paper to um the sides and then adjusting so you see me here i have my back pattern and my fourth pattern all looking the same at the base at the round base at the length see the a-line there and this is what we're going to be cutting on the fabric Stephanie.
this is the second method of how you can calculate the stretch on your fabric now the first method i did that on the first sewing version of my dress okay so the first sewing version i did the first method that you can calculate the stretch on the fabric and on this second sewing version where i sew this particular fabric we're going to be practicing the second method that i found out and yeah that's what we're doing the first thing i'm going to do is i am going to mark out the length of five inches and the width of five inches now when you're cutting your fabric to length and the width know that this is how you know the length of your fabric okay you can see this frame here this frame has some other things that we make you know what the length of your fabric is the actual length of the fabric and then the actual width of the fabric okay so this is the actual width this way and the actual length of the fabric how it came is this way okay and you can know that by this thing here it is always on the top of the length and on the base of the length of your fabric you can see this thing here so once we have that sorted out let's go ahead and cut five inches width and five inches length and why we need to mark out the length and the width is the fact that the stretch on your length is always different from the stretch it's not like always different but you need to know if it's different if you have a different stretch on the length of your fabric that's the actual length what kind of stretch you have and then on the width what kind of how many percent of stretch you have so that you can know how to place your pattern and cut if you want the actual stretchy parts to be where you use as the width okay so i'm going to mark the width this is the width and the width is going to be from here to here or five inches So this is what we are going to be working with now for this particular second method we are going to be using the ruler for this method okay we're going to be using our ruler and make sure you have your calculator okay or second form or whatever you can use to calculate by your side okay. so now first of all i'm going to find out the actual um stretch on the length this is the length okay this is how you know your length like i said i will place my ruler okay and i'm using this inches side you can see that on the ruler it has the inches right i'm going to use the inches side now the formula that we're going to be using to calculate the stretch is Um, the amount of stretch divided by the actual length or the actual number that you have on your fabric minus one inch okay so the formula is whatever we get after stretching divided by the length of, or the width of the fabric before we started stretching it minus one inch so since the length of my fabric is five inches if I stretch it out and I get 10 inches, what I'll be doing is 10 divided by 5 minus 1 inch. Do you get that? The formula that we're going to be using to calculate the stretch is whatever we get after stretching the fabric divided by the actual measurement of the fabric minus 1 inch. I cut out the length of five inches as the fabric length and the width of five inches right now when i stretch it out and i get eight inches what i would say is eight inches divided by the five inches which is the actual measurement of the fabric minus one inch okay so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to start by calculating the length this is the length so i'm going to calculate the stretch on the length okay and then to do this I'm going to place my ruler on the inch side and then I'm just going to grab my fabric. This is the length, so I'm going to open it. I'm going to stretch it out like this because I'm calculating for the length first, the length of my fabric, okay? So I'm going to hold it like this, see the free side, and I'm just going to hold my ruler like this, place it like this, okay? So what I will do now is I am going to just 
you know stretch out my fabric looking out see there is one two three four five six you know how your ruler looks like right of course you do so i'm just going to stretch out the fabric stretch it to the maximum um capacity okay so as i'm stretching this, i can just start from the beginning of the tape so i don't confuse you guys i'll start i'll start from here at the beginning of the tape and then i'll stretch it out and then i'm getting 6.75 okay that's where my hand is stopping so the first stretch is from the beginning and then it is stopping at 6.75 now what i will do is i'm going to say 6.75 divided by 5 which is the actual length of my fabric minus one inch so 6.75 divide by 5 inches right minus one inch i'm getting 0 0.35 right that's what i'm getting here 0 0.35 now to get the percentage you just say 0 0.35 times 100 now the percentage of stretch i have on this fabric length is 35 i hope you guys understand very simple we're going to do for the width and you understand very well okay the actual stretch on the length of my fabric is 35 percent stretch that's what i have on the length this is the length this is what i stretched okay this is the length now i'm going to stretch the width this is the width okay so i'm going to stretch here this is the width so I'll bring back my ruler and then I'm just going, this is the width of my fabric. So I'm going to stretch the fabric and then I'll place my hand from the beginning of the uh, ruler and then I'll see where it stops here. Doing that from the beginning of the ruler to this point, I'm getting 6.5 inches. Okay. So from here to here, just look at my hand in case you're not seeing. I'm stretching it to the maximum. Okay, this is the maximum stretch I can go. This is it. This is the maximum. I'm using my whole hand, my whole strength to stretch it. So I'm just going to place this side on the beginning of the tape. I'm um, sorry, on the beginning of the ruler. And then I will stretch. Are you seeing? It is stopping at... Are you seeing? So see what it is doing? Six points five inches okay from the beginning to this point 6.5 inches i'll come to my calculator here i will say 6.5 divide by 5 which is the actual measurement or the actual width of my fabric i'm getting 1.3 now 1.3 minus 1 remember you always minus 1 equals to i'm getting 0 0.3 so once I get 0 0.3, to get the percentage, I just have to times it by 100. And the percentage of stretch I am getting on this particular fabric width is 30 inches. Okay, so hope you understand. The percentage of stretch I'm getting on the width is 30 inches and on the length is 35. So this is the second method of how you can calculate the stretch. Please let me know in the comment section if you really understand exactly what I've done here. Let's go ahead and cut the pattern on this fabric now. Take note that I will be repeating the first and second method on the third dress. When I'm sewing the third dress, I'm still going to practice the first method and the second method with you using that particular fabric so you understand very well, okay? When you watch the first video, watch the second video, and watch the third video, there is no way you don't become perfect in calculating the stretch of your fabric. And from there, you can know how to sew stretchy fabric to your actual feet, okay? Or any of your clients' feet, okay? So thank you. And let's just go ahead and start cutting. So it is time for me to cut my pattern on the fabric and the first thing I'm going to do is fold my fabric into two, okay? Always important. I cannot emphasize on this enough, okay? Fold your fabric into two before you place your pattern paper to cut. And when cutting, make sure that the center front of your pattern is sitting on the close edge of your fabric. Now, if you don't know the meaning of close edge on the fabric, it means the place that it is closed, not the place that you have two piece of different fabric okay the place that it's close that's your close edge place your pattern there and go ahead and cut okay so while cutting my pattern on the fabric i decided to also increase the length of my dress you can see i added like four more inches to the length four to five inches to the length because i want this to be so long i want it to be touching the ground unless i wear a high heel or a high boot and it to just raise up okay i want it to be really long and that is why i left 
four to five inches on the length and also while cutting on the sides i left half an inch and this is not for sewing measurement i'm not doing this as sewing allowance like i said this is a stretchy fabric right i'm going to sew into my measurements i left that allowance for the weaving so go ahead and do this okay so this is the allowance i left for the weaving and you guys the way i placed my fabric to cut remember i measured the stretch on the fabric okay so i used the side that stretches um 35 percent and that's why i used to cut this on the width okay i don't know if you get but yeah so this fabric is or this dress is going to really stretch out and fit me next i am going to be adjusting my front neckline i want like a v-neck on the front and to get that v-neck i will mark five inches down from my neckline and then i'll connect that five inches to the neck width okay my chalk wasn't really visible here so i just hope you see what i'm doing okay so i'm just going to connect like this at this point you can create whatever neckline you want okay now your dress now you the wearer whatever net, um, neckline you want on your dress please go ahead and do that okay for me this is what i want and this is what i did while i was creating this dress let me not lie i was just freestyling okay i was just freestyling what i actually drew on my paper like i drew something that i wanted to create what i drew was not what i created at last i was just freestyling and like just going with the flow and when i was done going with the flow i loved the result okay i let the creative part of me take over and i love the result of the whole process so let me open this so you see what i have as my neckline okay so this is my neckline for my dress and we're going to be creating a facing for this so we're going to be adjusting the armhole and also creating a facing okay and i will show you how so i brought this up close so that you see what i do to adjust the armhole now i want the armhole to be deeper than this okay i want the armhole to be deeper both the front and the back but this is the front right now so i'll show you what i'll do to get a deeper armhole from where i have my armhole point i'm going to be marking three inches down from this point here i'll go down by three inches okay so i'm marking three inches down now if you want it to be deeper than mine and you want it to be somehow revealing you can go down by four or five you know the more you go down the more you're exposing your upper side okay so whatever you want just do it it's your dress now on the shoulder i'm going to be going in by two inches okay just watch my tape see what i'm doing i'm going in by two inches and i'll connect that two inches to the three inches down okay just watch my hand if in, ca in fact in case you're not even hearing what i'm speaking because i always get comments from people that seems not to be speaking english and that is the only way i can communicate um please just go ahead and look at my hands i don't think you can ever go wrong there's no language the hand does not have a language okay the hand is doing exactly what it's doing and you can interpret that in any language okay so just follow my hands and i'm sure you're going to get what i'm doing so I'll cut out you know um the ss following the line i created from joining my two inches on the shoulder to the three inches on the armhole okay so this is going to create a deeper armhole for me and i will show you you know i always show you <laughs> okay so this is what i got at last like i said vivian was following the flow okay i was just following allowing my creative side take over <laughs> So now I grabbed a fresh fabric, um, so some of the pieces remaining, and I'm going to fold this fabric into two because I want to cut my facing. And the facing I'm cutting is going to be for the neckline and also for the armhole, okay? So I'm not attaching the sleeve to this. I just wanted, you know, to have that kind of sleeveless um, dress, yeah? So I have my front piece folded into two, and I'll place this on the fabric I already folded into two to cut my facing. And I'm just pinning this down. So why I pin down? Because I'm going to be tracing what I have on my front piece on this new fabric, okay? Because this is how you get your face on. You just trace it out, okay? You bring a new fabric, place it on your whatever you're trying to create facing for and trace, okay? If you're only creating for the neckline, 
you only trace for the neckline if you're creating for the armhole you trace both armhole and neckline okay that's what i'm doing kind of duplicating my um front piece only from the bust to the shoulder i'm duplicating it on the new fabric and that is going to be the facing so it's like cutting a lining but not full lining okay like half lining but we call it facing though i don't know how to explain it again <laughs> So let me show you what i have so this is half of it like i said facing is not the whole thing it's just half of it okay so this is the facing i'm going to use to sew up my front piece and don't get me wrong we're going to be doing this same thing on the back piece okay we're going to be creating the facing for the back piece okay and when you're going to sew you place it right side facing right side like this just the way i placed it and you go ahead and sew the armhole so your neckline that's what we're going to do when we take this to the sewing machine i'll sew the armhole i'm not going to sew the shoulders but i'm going to sew the neckline and the armhole okay and before we you know duplicate our back piece to get the facing we're going to place the front piece and the back piece together now pin the shoulders together you remember that the neck width is the same what i'm doing is i'm making sure that exactly what i have on my front piece is what i have on my back piece at the armhole side or on the armhole side so i'm just tracing out the armhole side by cutting it with my scissors okay i've been saying tracing like i'm using something to trace i mean cotton so once i was done cutting now i have the same deepness of armhole on my back piece and i'll go ahead to create my back piece facing okay so this is the back facing <laughs> i'm going to place my back piece on the new fabric folded into two and i will trace the armhole and then trace the neckline it's going to be automatically become my facing for the back At this point i don't know why i'm sounding somehow confused like i wasn't the one that made this for forgive me i just i'm like i'm conscious of the things i'm saying because i don't want to over explain and at the same time i want you guys to get the steps i'm taking okay so um if you guys want a dedicated video on how to create facing i'm going to actually create that like i'm going to do it if i get enough comment about it i'm going to take my time to explain the theory or the practical behind creating a facing okay i'm just going to explain why you need to create facing when you need to create facing and all those stuff okay so just let me know in the comment section but anyway this is my facing for the back and now it is time for us to sew okay so we've gotten to the good parts the good parts where we sew on the sewing machine now this is my facing for the front i'm going to be sewing the front facing together with you guys so please watch what i'm doing so i'm going to start by sewing the neckline by 0.5 inch place the facing right side of the fabric facing the right side of your dress fabric and you see that neckline you have that shape of neckline you have follow it and just sew your facing on it okay it is very simple you cannot go wrong okay you can't so just watch out watch what i'm doing <laughs> Now remember that the facing we created is also for the armhole okay so once you're done with the neck go ahead and sew on the armhole now i was just showing you not to sew the shoulders you don't need it okay so just sew your neckline and then come back to your armhole and sew this by 0.5 inch chale it be simple simple steps now i know that this step is not necessary if you are going to be adding a sleeve to your dress okay so if you're only here to watch how i was able to create the a-line on the dress by now you should just be done with the video you can go off and continue creating your dress but then if you're here to get the whole package for the dress put the armhole the every everything please keep watching <laughs> okay so i'm repeating the step i did um that's sewing the other armhole i'm doing that on the other side of the armhole and i'll show you guys what this looks like okay So, but before i show you guys go ahead and notch for this sewing that we just did to lay flat go ahead and notch all side but please do not sew in the side of your facing okay the side of your facing to the side of your dress don't sew that in it's going to really make your dress look somehow just sew only the part i showed you the neckline and the armhole and you're done okay 
so now i'm just going to notch 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 take your time to notch so this lays flat when you flip it to the right side and i feel like i'm wrapping what is happening vivian <laughs> after notching i'm going to flip this to the right side and i'll take this to my table to iron okay so everything needs to lay flat before i join it to the back piece this is the front piece of course you can see the neckline so let's go iron so here i am just trying to remind those that still want me to tell them every step to take that please go ahead and repeat the same step for the back piece okay sew your face into the neckline and the armhole of the back piece and that is the only place you need to sew it okay on the armhole and on the neckline and you're done and make sure you notch and bring it back here to iron now this is my back piece i actually decided to show you guys how i iron my back piece because i wanted you guys to see that i did the same thing i did on the front piece i did it here on the back piece okay so this is the back piece with the facing attached to it and i'm just ironing the armhole i'll iron the neckline so that when i finish ironing and i'm trying to iron generally every other part it is really flat i don't know if you get the gist okay so this is what the back piece is looking like i'm going to place my front piece on the back piece and i will sew the shoulders by 0.5 inch i'll sew the side by 0.75 inch let's just do the sewing okay so let's go so this is the shoulders that i'm trying to sew right now and i'm sewing this by 0.5 inch now there are, there are other ways you can attach this um front to back piece because it has facing okay there are other ways you can do this but i didn't want to do that because i was just working so hard to make this video a beginner friendly video but then next time if i use facing to create um any of my necklines i'm going to show you guys another way to attach where you don't see sewing on the shoulders okay right now what i have here there is a sewing on the shoulder and that can be tacky especially when i don't have a weaving machine but i'm just trying i was just trying to make this a really beginner friend i didn't want to start any people okay do this one you know pass it through here now nah, i didn't want to do that but next time expect that kind of process okay now on the side i'm sewing the sides by 0.75 inch i'm just joining my front and my back piece together so if you actually paid attention to the creation of this dress from the pattern drafting to this second dress that we're sewing you realize that creating a dress is actually very very simple right it is it is very simple let me know if what you think now we're going to be adjusting the armhole because of i found that there is a, there's a gaping and i actually adjusted that on the first dress i created so i'm going to be doing the adjustments here on the second dress so by doing that i have to mark the middle point on my armhole and take my darts okay so if you have watched the first one the first sewing version and you're watching this one this should this should be like news to you okay you already know what we're doing here we're taking out that because there is a gaping on the pattern and i didn't adjust it yours might not have it okay yours might not have it but might do and i'm taking a dart for that okay so my dart is going to be 0.5 inch and i'll sew that in and that is basically it for this dress okay i'm going to be showing you guys the last step which is hemming the base um yeah and that is it for this dress like i was so excited with the fight see i want to tell you guys something when I was done making this dress and I washed and ironed it, my other sister collect like she came into my room fast, like my immediate other sister, because we like to wear each other's things. Like that is how we behave in my house. Okay, so when I was done, she was like, ah, ah can she wear it? I have no need to, but I have no problem with that because I'm a tailor. Okay, yeah, I can make whatever I want to make at any time. So yeah, I always allow, like I always agree, and my sister always agrees. Like we're like that. So when she said, when she saw it, she was like, what? Eh, can she wear it? I was like, yes, please. And she wore it to her store. Like she wore it to her store. Like she was so excited, and I actually love the fit on her, even though like she's taller than me and or taller than i and you know the dress was somehow like becoming jumpy 
you know, I made it to my own length. Yeah, I'm a short girl. I know they hide that one. But anyways, it was somehow jumpy on her, but it was still fine. See, when she wore it and she was going, I was looking, I was like, hey, God, let me make this dress. Let me make this dress. Now, up to this point that I'm talking to you, I've not worn this particular dress. I've worn the first dress I made. That's the first sewing version. I've worn that one like more than two to three times. And I'm planning to wear it tomorrow for a creator's event that I'm going to. Because that's how I love that dress. Okay, so I am yet to break into this particular dress. But I know it's going to fit me well. I'm probably waiting for when I get a very nice, sweet sandal sandal heel i don't know if that's what i'm waiting for but i don't know i don't know but the result guys i'm trying to tell you that the result was nice but ah back to what i'm doing i am hemming the base of my dress and i've gone to the weavers to weave the dress and you guys saw the way it looked after weaving it right this is what it looked like after i was done weaving and now i am hemming with hemming gum so using hemming gum to hem the base of your dress this is the result you get a clean finish and you guys thank you so much for sticking with me for this sewing version please don't forget to like this particular video like the first sewing version like the pattern drafting please go ahead and do that and yeah if you are seeing this channel for the first time don't forget to subscribe i think you want to stick around yeah don't you think so stick around and let's create awesome dresses and awesome outfits in general together okay let's create beautiful things for ourselves okay so yeah thank you once more i love you guys so much love and life to you wherever you are i'll be seeing you in my next video bye